Good morning. It's a nice, cool, crisp morning right now. Uh, it's probably in the 30s out here this morning. There was a frost warning last night, and uh, supposedly the northern lights could be seen last night, but I was up throughout the night trying to see, get a glimpse of them, but it was a little bit cloudy throughout the night, so it might have been I didn't get a chance to see them, but uh, really wishing we could see them. But I um, thought I'd do a real quick video here on kind of an update about the Chevy Tracker that we had that we were uh, basically ripped off by some guy on eBay, a dealership on eBay, a stealership. Well, got rid of it the other day. The guy that bought it um, had an interesting story, which leads me into the second point of the video. Um, this guy was a commercial fisherman in southern Maine, lobster fisherman, and uh, <clears throat> he had worked his way up um, from digging bloodworms the whole way up to having his own boat, his own lobster boat, and he had a <clears throat> something go wrong. He, he told me about how that um, the boat sank, I guess, and the insurance company wouldn't cover it. And they found some kind of little loophole or something where they didn't have to pay for his boat. And so he lost everything. And you know, that's a theme that's repeated many times with insurance companies. Um, and when you get right down to it, insurance companies are a scam. They truly are. And uh, <clears throat> the way insurance works, if you just think about it on a basic level, you have to have, uh, you know, the old saying goes, many hands make, make light work. Well, many pockets or many wallets make insurance happen. Um, insurance works by having a lot of people paying into their system so that they can pay out small amounts. Um, <clears throat> and that system works for a while until people start to run out of money. And then people no longer can afford the insurance and the insurance companies fold up. And I'm saying this for a reason because I believe that the insurance industry is dying right now in America. Um, how, why do I say that? Well, uh, if something is dying financially, like an insurance, this insurance scam thing, um, what would you see? You would see them getting very desperate for money. Uh, banking would be a good way to say this because with banking, they need liquidity. What, that, what does that mean? That means that they need to have the velocity of money. They need to be having money coming in, being deposited, money going out, money being loaned, money moving. It has to move. When the fiat currency sits for too long, it starts to lose a lot more value and whatever, and it's, it's people lose confidence in the dollar. Well, take that and make it into the insurance thing. They need to have money coming in. Um, <clears throat> and what's occurring right now is there was a recent story, big story came out, where the nation's largest holder of mortgages, um, the Fat, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, tied into the Federal Reserve there, um, they own 70% of the mortgages in America right now. And they came out and they said that they're going to require all of their mortgagers, people that are mortgaged through them, to have the very highest level of homeowner's insurance at a time when people are having a hard time making ends meet. See, the uh, scammers within the government, within the finance world and whatever else, they don't really relate too good to people like us. People that are just, you know, the common man uh, that's out there on the street trying to make a living and whatever, they don't relate. It's just sort of a thing of, um, what was it, uh, Marie Antoinette, you know, the people are starving and she says, let them have cake, you know, just what's the big deal? I don't understand. I'm not starving. So let the people just, you know, if you don't have anything to eat in terms of regular food, well, then you eat cake, you know, just well, I had no idea. She has no concept of um, what it's like to suffer. And so uh, that's what's going on right now. 
oh, hey, uh, people are having a hard time um, affording anything, so let's make them pay more for homeowner's insurance. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Stupid. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, seeing that and then seeing the fact that a lot of, uh, I saw another story about how that um, a lot of wealthy people are now self-insuring. In other words, they're dropping their insurance policies and just saying, hopefully, um, you know, my house that I own won't have a problem, but if it does, I'll just have to pay for it myself. So, kind of a bad situation. Right there's the stump of the tree that was down across the trail here. You can see behind me, it's now cleared. Worked on that uh, the other day and uh, got some pretty good logs out of the, the tree, the two trees. The other tree was right here coming across. You can see a lot of the tops back in there. So thankfully the, our trail here is done because this is an access trail over to the other part of our property. But um, getting back to what I'm saying here, uh, people are dropping health insurance, people are dropping vehicle insurance, people are dropping homeowner's insurance. Um, a lot of homeowners, if you get past a certain year, depending on the type of mortgage you have, um, when I used to, when I was studying the whole thing, um, if you have to give a certain, I think if you had 30% that you could put down on the house, then you didn't need homeowner's insurance to get the mortgage. But if you had less than 30%, at the time that I checked into it, like I said, it could be different for different mortgages or they could have changed the rules or whatever. But back when I was looking into it years ago, um, never did get a mortgage, but I looked into it. Uh, they were saying that below 30%, you had to have homeowner's insurance above 30% down on the house. You didn't have to have homeowner's insurance. They recommended it, but you didn't have to have it. Well, how many people now have been dropping their homeowner's insurance? And what's another thing that goes into this? Uh, well, um, people are having their insurance rates go up quite a bit. Why? Because America is being hit with a lot of uh, acts of God, also known as natural disasters. One of the instruments of death that God uses to judge the wicked. And so we have all these tornadoes right now in the Midwest. I saw down in Texas, they had a, a hailstorm recently where the hailstones were the size of baseballs. I think the one was uh, six and a quarter inches in diameter. That's a pretty big hailstone. And, you know, there's flooding, there's wildfires, there's, there's all sorts of things happening. And how many of those people are making insurance claims? I mean, you see some of these videos of where the tornadoes are hitting uh, out there in the Midwest, I mean, there's, there isn't anything left of uh, these people's homes. It's just completely gone. Just a pile of, of uh, broken two by fours and insulation and shingles and a couple of other things. And they're trying to pick through the rubble, trying to find a few valuables that they can keep. What happens if the insurance industry goes belly up and everybody in America becomes quote unquote self-insured? Uh, hey, if you're home is lost if it's destroyed um, you pay for it yourself oh, what <laughs> huh what would people do so um, we did an, uh, my wife and I actually did uh, a number of studies on the insurance thing years ago and I'm going to link them at the end of this video and uh, about uh, the issues against insurance and um, I remember it was so funny because I had a lot of people were got upset that I was speaking against insurance policies and things. And they said, well, you just wait. You know, if your wife becomes, you know, they use the world, worldly word pregnant, we would say with child is the bi biblical term. But you wait till she becomes, you know, the P word. And, and uh, then you'll see that you need health insurance. You can't just not have health insurance like that. I had people say that to me back then, and, and the funny thing was, we had already had our son, and we just hadn't told people about it yet, so it's kind of a, <laughs> you'll find out eventually, we'll tell people, and, 
And then you'll realize, uh, no, actually we didn't need health insurance. And the funny thing is too, I've, I've known people that had really good health insurance and when they had a child, the insurance would not cover the birth of the child and they had to pay for it out of pocket. So, but uh, I believe that as part of God's judgment, I believe that this insurance fraud, this insurance scam is going to be brought down. A uh, family went to a, a church building that I was raised in, uh, just to tell another story. Um, they had a son, I think he got something uh, like a spinal meningitis or something. It was really bad what he had gotten. And, you know, he had to go to the hospital and everything else. And they racked up just insane levels of medical debt because of surgeries and everything else that their son needed. You know, they were fighting to just keep him alive. And so he was in the hospital and all sorts of emergency procedures and they had to go to specialists and, you know, neurosurgeons and, I mean, just really expensive and the insurance company dropped them. Good insurance, but uh, hey, you're you know, costing us a bit too much here. We're losing some money, so uh, we're going to have to drop you. We can't cover you anymore. And it ruined them, ruined the family. And I mean, I've heard so many nightmare stories of things like that. I actually heard recently that there was a woman that wanted to go in for a surgery and they told her that she needed to prepay for it, <laughs> pay before they would start the surgery. Um, so what would this country look like if people can't borrow money anymore and if there's no insurance? There's an interesting thought. So uh, keep your eyes on the insurance industry because I believe I'm not going to give you any kind of, the Lord's not revealed anything to me. I can't say anything prophetically speaking. I mean, in the time of Jacob's trouble, the, the insurance company thing won't be there. The insurance industry is going to be gone. But uh, before then, here in America, I think that, um, you know, the savvy investors, the big financiers and whatever, their, their plans for America are very volatile right now. It's not, I, I shouldn't say their plans are, but the, this nation is very volatile. And I think what they want for this country is starting to slip through their fingers. Their high tech smart cities and, and central bank digital currencies, and they're going to turn all the wilderness areas like where I'm at right now on my land. They'll take my land from me and they're going to turn it into a bio reserve or something where nobody's allowed to go. Which is funny, by the way, I need to say this too. Oh, we're going to, we want to create bioreserves, Agenda 21. We're going to, an Agenda 2030 and an Agenda 2050 and we're, we're carbon net zero and everything. You know what that really means? Once they kick people out of the wilderness areas like this, they can come in and they can rape this land and mine it and, and uh, log it and do whatever they want. You say, how do you know that? Well, because not far from where I'm at right now, um, the National Monument uh, is over that way to the west of us over there. And uh, National Monument, I think it used to be a park and then right before we came to this area, they, they uh, voted to make it into a National Monument. And that thing, uh, oh, it's a National Monument. Oh, they're, you know, we're going to preserve that and whatever else. They log grape that thing. They're back in there logging all the time. See big trucks coming out with, with trees. So, oh, we're going to create these bioreserve places and, and we're going to have these special no people allowed. Yeah, because they don't want to, you to see what they're going to do. Um, that's what they want. And uh, if they're, I don't know at this point if they're going to get that, to be quite frank with you, because over there in, in uh, Asia and through, you know, going over there making this new Silk Road thing to increase the uh, um, ability of people to, uh, you know, China and India and all the big producers over there. That's where the money's going to be. So the financiers that are here in America, as they see more and more people just simply saying, we can't continue. 
We're not making enough money. The cost of living adjustment has not gone up properly. Housing is too expensive. Everything is too expensive. People are financing their day-to-day -day lives with debt. Buying groceries. I mean, I, I don't know if I told this story before, but I'll repeat it. Sorry if you've heard this before, but at the grocery store the other day down in the town of Patton, and um, there was an older man there, and the, uh, he was talking about how that um, he had to make a decision whether he would be eating or his cats. And, he, and they said, which one's it going to be? He said, well, the cats need the food right now, so I'm not going to be eating tonight, but I have, you know, I'm going to buy this food for my cat. And, uh, I mean, it's getting pretty nutty here in this country. Older people that are having to make a choice between them eating or their pet. And, uh, and you can just keep pushing people like that and getting more money out of them. You know, the, the old saying goes, you can't get blood out of a turnip. Um, you, can't get blood, you can't get money out of poor people. So if you're an insurance scammer, um, what do you, where do you want to go? You start looking over at China with a billion people and you think, hmm, hmm, India, a billion people. Oh, you know, those are emerging markets. And you look at America with all of the tornadoes hitting it and all the other disasters. And I think that we've just seen the beginning of it for this year because God's wrath is coming upon this nation. This, the Lord is going to judge America for the wickedness that we have done. And this nation is going to be brought down. So uh, all the, oh, we're going to have central bank digital currencies and we're going, they're going to make Big Brother and all this other stuff. That stuff costs money. And um, they're not going to be able to just shift. And I mean, literally what, uh, uh, two days from now, I think today's the 12th. Two days from now is the, this big BRICS currency thing happening over there in Russia, you know, on the 14th. I mean, there's, there's big events that are about to happen. Uh, the, the American dollar is losing its power and, well, lost its power. Um, it's just crazy to think about. So, uh, I would say that the key to everything is uh, when the insurance industry collapses in America. And um, you can have a part in that by uh, getting rid of insurance as much as you can. Um, <clears throat> my vehicles, you can't drive a vehicle on the road. I mean, you can technically, and if you get caught, then you're going to get a fine or whatever else, and you need to, you know, you might lose your license or something. I'm not sure how far they would go with it. But, um, <clears throat> you know, vehicle insurance, that's all that I have. I don't have any other type of insurance, no health insurance, no homeowner's insurance, no life insurance, no fire insurance or whatever. Um, and again, you know, I had a issue years ago where I had a Yamaha Banshee four-wheeler that was stolen and I had insurance on it, had an insurance policy on it because I had had another four-wheeler stolen and I didn't, didn't have insurance and, and I lost that money. And, uh, my father was trying to get his homeowner's insurance policy to pay for it and they wouldn't do it. But when I had my four-wheeler stolen, um, they brought the insurance guy came out and everything else and I explained the situation and they were, you know, uh, we're not sure if we can cover it, yeah, you know, and, and, but they had no choice and so they had to cover it. So I've had bad experiences with insurance as well. <clears throat> so, um, do what you can to get rid of insurance policies out of your life because quite frankly, if we can, uh, if we can see and pray against the this insurance industry thing and people would basically have to go back to living by faith uh, faith in God not insurance and um, people would start to realize you know I could lose my home I could lose everything uh, they might start to pray more they might actually get a little bit more serious about God and the Bible and living right and and everything right now hey something bad happens I get an insurance payout That'd be pretty nice, man. So, like I said, I'm going to put links at the end of this video to our studies that we did on the insurance thing and going through the scriptures and showing that the Bible is against 
the concept of insurance, secular companies using insurance. And uh, <clears throat> if you know anything about financial stuff or whatever, I'd say keep an eye on the insurance thing because I think it's about to come down. I think that they're having some serious problems. That's why they're trying to increase uh, the amount of insurance that people are required to have. There you can see the two logs. Drag them out here with my plow truck right there that we're back blocking the trail over here. Um, have some plans for those logs. But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, keep an eye on the insurance industry. And I think uh, we should pray against it. I know I'm going to get people in the comments, Brother Brian, I don't have a choice, so we have to have insurance. And, you know, you're not a good husband and father because you don't have a life insurance policy or something. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> don't waste your time. Uh, you're not going to convince me of that. Um, but, yeah, watch the videos at the end. And that will be it for now. I'm going to be uploading an, a really big study I worked on uh, yesterday. And um, so that will be it. See you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.